Welcome back. Let's keep learning about the uh, details about inheritance. What we're going to take a look at in this video is something called overriding. Now what we've seen you can do with these classes is you can extend a class like student extends person. You get all the methods from person except for the private ones and you get to add some of your own. So for example here, person has a couple methods like talk, breathe, these age methods. But when I go student extends person, I give them some more behavior. And this behavior is more related to the student. So study, get average mark. Those are new methods. But you'll see here, I've actually written a method that was already in the person class called public void talk. So if we pop back to the person class here, you'll see public void talk, person talk. In the student class, public void talk says system out print line student talk. This is called overriding. So basically, even though the student class, because it builds upon the person class, gets the method talk, if you don't like that talk method and you want to sort of have a version just for student, you can basically rewrite the method. And by rewriting the method, the exact same method signature, public void talk, what you're doing is called overriding. And so you'll see here you get a little yellow warning in NetBeans that says add override notation. I'm just going to entertain it and go sure, click. It adds that there. That's a little developer's note to say, hey, this method is actually in my super class or one of the classes I extend off of. So it's letting you know, hey, you're overriding the method. And that's just like a little developer note. Okay, so somebody looking at this class knows that that's what you're doing here. You'll notice when I make a student now and I ask them to talk, it will ignore this talk method because you've overrided it with this method. And so we should get a student talk. So when I see the runner here, and let's take a person like Andrew, and I say, hey, Andrew, talk. Hey, Hazel, talk. And you'll see in a second, I even gave the exchange student class an overridden talk method. Talk, talk, talk. Same method name, but what we get is we get each one having their own. And so you'll see person talk student talk and exchange student talk and that all comes from the talk method in person being overridden in student and being overridden I could add the little annotation there overridden inside exchange student just so you can see that yes in fact it uses the updated version so that's called overriding now you can override methods all you want uh, there's basically only one rule. You have to have the same signature to override the method. I'll throw in one little extra here. Sometimes you might not want somebody to override your method. So let's say you are in the person class and you say, you know what? The talk method is very special. It's used in other parts of the code, okay, which it isn't here, but let's just pretend it is. And this talk method is so important, I never want people to fiddle with it and do this. Don't go and change talk. Then what you can do in one of your classes is you can declare it with a new keyword and you can go public, final, void, talk. Final means final, no changing. This is set in stone, no go. So when we go to our student class now and you go here, all of a sudden, talk in student cannot override talk. It knows. Okay, this was declared final, you can't do it. And so it prevents somebody from changing one of your methods, right? Now, again, it depends on your project, uh, when you would want this to happen, when you would want this not to happen. Here's a little example here, using a class called LCD screens. So one of the sample projects in here has screen. Color screen builds off a screen with the ability to draw in color and color screen plus adds more function which lets you align stuff to the left to the right vertical up and down in the project here and remember this is just a quick look at it but you'll see here my screen class 
has a method called connect to device. Whatever code, I haven't put it in here, right? We're just pretending for short examples, but this code would connect to the actual device that uses the screen class. So that code might be, you know, 10, 20, 30 lines, whatever to connect. I never want somebody changing that code because you know what? Connecting to device, there's no flexibility there. That is the code to do that. So I make this method final. That way, when I actually go to, let's say, my color screen class, if I went and tried to change that public Boolean connect to device string da 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 da, it's going to basically, when I finish this off, it's going to say, can't do it. That was declared as final. It prevents people from messing around with your code. Okay, that shouldn't be messed around with. And that's basically your choices with overriding and final. So they're sort of opposite of each other, but gives you options in your classes. Let's take another little look at overriding here. That's a good one. And it has to do with this class I've written here called bugs. I'll just show you what bugs does. Bugs, a little simulation. These things here are instances of the bug class. And when I hit run, the bugs are constantly asked to perform. So they just keep being asked to perform. Now you're going to see here, these are actually representing two different classes. They're coded differently. As you can see, their behavior is different. One's a box bug, named obvious, and this one's just a regular bug. It just does a turn, and then it eventually stops. Here's where I've done the overriding with these classes. So if I take a quick peek at the classes, just looking for the main points here, you'll see the bug class itself has a method called act. This is what the bug is being asked to do every half second or so. Hey bug, act. Hey bug, act. Hey bug, act. So that's the main code. You'll see here that I wanted to make that new type of bug called a box bug. So I made box bug, extends bug, so I got everything that the bug had, but I rewrote, I overrided the act method and I gave it a different act method. Left everything else pretty well much the same. And with different code in the act method, gives it its different behavior, but it retained all the other stuff which I liked from the bug class. So very minor change, very different object behavior, saved me a lot of time without having to copy and paste all this other code from the bug class. Right? Now remember, we're trying to keep these examples short and simple here, but for big programs, this is a big advantage to be able to use inheritance and overriding, etc., to help you develop your projects faster. Anyways, that was the goal of overriding. Hope that makes sense. We'll see you in the next video.